How do you know if you're, uh, if you have sincerity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do you know if you have sincerity in what you're doing? For example, you said that um, if I'm praying salah and I'm doing taraweeh, how do I know that this is, you know, I'm doing this sincerely? Sometimes I feel very tired in this. So there's two things to it. First of all, no matter which ibadah that you do, it should always be done in a form that you're comfortable with. So one should not read the Qur'an so much so that you become tired of it. It should be something that's enjoyable. Same thing for when you're doing voluntary fasting. But what brings about sincerity in something has to do with the amount of understanding and the amount of love and the amount of uh, closeness you want with, with, with that entity. For example, if you have a friend that's very dear to you, and when they call you and say, would you like to meet up somewhere to eat, lunch, or what have you, you'll be very sincere in your response because this person means something to you. So you don't want to just say, I'm not available, or even if you say you're not available, you will give a very valid reason. So they understand that you're being sincere. But when it comes to somebody that's just not really much to you, you don't hold them near and dear. So if they ask you the same question, would you like to go somewhere to eat? You would just give a very vague and generic response because it doesn't matter to you what they think, how they feel. So likewise, if you want to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, First of all, you have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to love Him so dearly that whatever you do is sincere. But you cannot love somebody till you get to know them first. So then how do you get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well, of course, first and foremost, you read the Qur'an. Why? Because this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find many beautiful miracles which prove that this word is indeed the one of the Creator and that no human being could have written this. So for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an that He has created the Samawat, seven universes, one above the other. In 2004, Michio Kaku, one of the world's renowned astronomers, in his book Parallel Worlds, proves according to their scientific theories, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said 1400 and some odd years ago in the Qur'an. Something that neither prior nor up until this point, any form of science had discovered. That the universe has constituted a multiverse and that it actually is layered one over the other and not kind of surrounding each other like a form of an egg, like what they had thought beforehand. Or for example, if we look at the atom and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it and how it's um, done and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Qur'an that everything of good that you do or evil that you do of an atom size or smaller than that will be brought forth. So until about 70 years ago, no such thing as anything smaller than the atom existed in the in, in scientific theory and now they've discovered that it does. So well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran okay, that we have caused the universe to spread and it's constantly spreading. And this is something that again is discovered by modern science. Or the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the mountains are constantly in motion. And with the advent of seism you know, seismology and the seismographs, they're able to read that yes, the mountains are actually constantly shaking and vibrating. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that in the Qur'an. And there's more, so many more miracles, so many more beautiful miracles. And as you get to know these more and more and more, then you truly accept that this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then so you feel comfortable reading the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you read the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your heart falls in love with your Rabb. And who is your Rabb? In a hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
the Prophet ﷺ describes. He said, imagine if you were to get a ring, the ring you wear on your finger, and you were to throw it in the most vast desert on earth, which is the Sahara Desert, about the size of the United States. Imagine taking a ring and dropping it in the size in a country the size of the United States. That ring would be the first universe that we all live in. And the size of that unit, the size of the United States, the size of that massive desert would be the second universe, the second Samawat. Then take a ring again and throw it. And that would be the second universe compared to the size of the third. And this continues on all the way till you get to the seventh. One being that size compared to the next, that size compared to the next. And then take that ring of the seventh heaven and throw it at small size. It would be the size of a small ring. And the size of this vast desert would be the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then throw that and then it would be the arsh, the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over everything. And above all that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you understand this massive Rabb, this majestic Rabb, in front of whom you're doing sujood, in front of whom you're doing ruku, then you'll have more humility when you're praying your salah and at the same time your sincerity will grow because you know that you're not just praying to the wall you're not just praying to empty air you're praying in a direction that this Rabb, this Creator had told you to pray towards so that you would be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told all the angels and all of creation to bow down to Adam. Doesn't mean that they worshipped Adam. The idea was that they obey Allah. Wherever He tells them to bow down, they bow down. So as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to bow down towards the Kaaba, likewise we don't worship the Kaaba. But it's because Allah told us subhanahu wa ta'ala, bow down here so we do. And we obey our Rabb. And so sincerity comes from loving your Rabb, from knowing your Rabb. And as the more you get to know Him, the more you will love Him. And the more you love Him, the more you will be sincere to Him. And the more you are sincere to Him, the more you'll want to be in front of Him. You'll want to do your Salah more. You will enjoy the Salah more. But it all begins with you. How much do you want to spend time getting to know your Rabb? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Alhamdulillah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us the ability to be able to get to know our Rabb rather than to just blindly worship. And then surely we would be in a state of confusion. Alhamdulillah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is a just Rabb.